Well, welcome back to the channel and my journey with the Lotus Esprit. So today I'm going to be working on the carburetor. Um, so you may have seen a previous video where I went to see the Esprit Whisperer who told me what I needed to do to sort out my carburetor issues or some of them. This is too rigid. There should be a little bit of flex here because they're going up and down with the engine. Um, the fuel is coming into them and then frothing, so bubbling, and that's what's causing some of the issues. There's also a bit of imbalance um, front to back. It seems like the back is doing all the work. So today I'm going to take off the carburetors and uh, put them back on with new O-rings on the MESAB plates and with uh, new buffer washers, cup washers. And hopefully that will stop the fuel frothing, which will stop the overfueling and uh, make everything run a lot better. Um, I'll then need to try and balance up the carbs front to back a bit more. So I'm going to have to take off the airbox cover and uh, move the ducting out of the way. And I'm hoping I can get to these uh, nuts underneath and sort of uh, as well without having to remove all this kind of engine base around. Um, it's one of the strange things about S3 is that when this got built up it kind of made it made life a lot harder for, for maintenance. In the S1 and 2 the, f the boot floor is quite flat and then there's the, uh, the engine cover sort of is almost like a lid that sits over like a dome. You take that dome off and you've got good access to everything. So carburetors are taken off. That was quite a challenge, particularly the, the bolts underneath, uh, the nuts underneath. Just need to disconnect the choke cable uh, and then I can have that out completely and uh, get in and grab the, the washers that have fallen down in the engine. So I can see on this side, the inlets, um, I'll clean those up. And uh, these are the plates and the O-rings. They're not actually that bad looking, but uh, I will replace them since I've got the replacements. So these are the um, MESAB plates or spacer plates that go between the carburetor and the inlet manifold. You see you've got the O-rings there. I just put a dot of super glue either side uh, just to hold it in so it doesn't sort of come out while I'm trying to fix it in place. So the other thing you can see is that on one side is a small cone. Now apparently, the addition of that cone on one side adds about five horsepower. So I'm putting these mounting uh, on. I've got. I'm doing a bit of a cheat, really. I'm doing the easy ones first on top, but just doing them finger tight. Um, it's going to be a real difficulty getting the ones on underneath. I've done the one at the front because I can just get to that sort of through here. Uh, but I suspect some of the others are going to be quite a challenge. Okay, so it's all back together again. Um, these are now tight to the point where I can just about move them. It's supposed to be a millimetre gap in between either side of the plates, which is about right. 
it's quite hard getting them underneath the underneath ones done. Um, reconnects the fuel line, put the airbox back on. Um, the only thing really now is to figure out what's going to happen sort of front to back in terms of balancing. So what I need to do is just roll it forward on the driveway a little bit so I don't stink out the house and uh, see if I can fire it up. <laughs> made a difference, um, a positive difference. I'm still not sure if it's entirely perfect but I did manage to get the balance a little bit more to the front. I, I pulled the plugs earlier, pulled the front two and the engine sort of faltered, plugged them back in, pulled the rear two and it faltered probably a little bit more so it's still a little bit rearward but it's a massive improvement and, and, a, and I don't feel it sort of uh, popping and banging quite so much. So fingers crossed that it's, uh, it's made a difference. There's a couple of other things I need to do and then I'll be able to go back up to see Matt and uh, see what he can do to sort of fine tune the carbs. So the other job I have to do is the cam cover gaskets. Um, now you might uh, be able to see if I just put a piece of rag down there and bring it up. See there's a bit of, bit of oil on there. Um, what happens because the engine is sort of canted over the oil collects along the edges along the sort of seals of the two cam covers um, in the gaskets and sort of have to you know, work quite hard to keep that out and you know, however much of this sort of you know, kind of sealant stuff you put in whatever gaskets etc it's just not uh, not easy to keep it tight uh, or to keep it sort of uh, leak free so what I managed to pick up with these um, rubber gaskets, they're sort of medical grade rubber um, and they just fit pretty much dry, tiny dab of Vaseline apparently to keep them in place while you're fitting but uh, you know you can fit and refit those a few times um, without there being any issue so with a bit of luck that will be easy going. It's probably a bit of an access issue for the to do the exhaust one but uh, I'll see how I get on with that. Now the other thing that's likely to happen the moment you take these cam covers off is all the oil that's been sitting against them is going to pour out onto the floor. Um, so I'm going to take some precautions and put some um, cloths down but also a little tip um, we'll see if it works is to jack up the size of your car as high as possible just to kind of let and leave it that leave it there for a few minutes just to sort of let some of the oil seep back into um, yeah, into the block uh, from within the cam covers. We'll see if it works or not. So I've removed all of the bolts out of the um, cam cover for the inlet cam. I've got a variety of washers on but mostly it seems to be you know a flat washer and then a sort of rubber one but the rubber ones look a bit look a bit knackered they look like they're they've been rather squashed. So I've actually got new bolts and, and the washers to go to go back on. So you can also see I've put a couple of layers of, of blue wipe under there for when I lever off this and hopefully that will come off. Obviously, if, yeah, there you go, it's off. <laughs> Didn't think it'd be quite that easy, but there we go. I thought I'd have to prise that off. Um, but there you go, that's the top cam cover off. And looks like I got away without a great deal of oil coming out, which is good. Um, you can see the sort of the oil sitting there in there you know and that would the, all that oil on that side would have been up against the gasket so it's, it's why it's important to get a very good seal now what i need to do is obviously remove the, the the gasket that's on there and all of the gunge that it was stuck on with uh, and make sure it's properly clean to receive the new gasket so as you can see the old gasket's not coming off that easily it's uh, breaking up now i just need to make sure i don't get any of these bits of gasket sort of into the oil into the engine so that wouldn't be good. So there you go, I've cleaned it all up um, and uh, used a bit of brake cleaner on the surfaces and now to put the gasket in place I think I'm going to lay it onto the top of the cams 
and then put the cam cover over the top. I think for the, uh, for the exhaust uh, cam cover it might be a little bit different, but I'll, I'll do it this way and see how it goes. So that lays quite nicely just over the top there with the holes located into or with those lugs. So I'll clean up the cam cover inside. It wasn't too dirty anyway that one, so I'll give that a bit of a clean and then I'll pop it on. So these are new bolts. Um, got a flat washer and then a sort of rubber C-lock washer. Uh, these are the proper things to get. Um, there's a bit of a, as I said before, there was a bit of a mixture on the ones that I took off. So going for new and hopefully it'll look good as well as perform properly. Yeah, so we've got the, the new screws in, the new bolts in, uh, with the right washers. Uh, remember to connect up uh, this thing here, which is a, you know, the little thing for keeping the oil cap on and the throttle cable clamp. So these bolts need to be done up to around about five newton meters, which is practically nothing. Um, so I will still use the torque wrench, uh, but uh, I don't suppose it'll be many, many winds uh, to get it tight. So there we go, the new gasket is in place. Um, you can kind of see the, the kind of grey rubber end there. A bit of an issue, managed to shear off the one of the bolts. My torque wrench clearly isn't delivering five nanometers, uh, five newton meters properly, and over tightened and sheared off. So I had a bit of a bit of a problem in this one here. However, that's done. Um, given that that took quite a bit of time to sort out, and that the exhaust cam cover isn't actually leaking. I'm going to chicken out of doing that one, uh, particularly today. I'll monitor it and if it is le uh, leaking later, I will change that. That'll do for now, we'll catch you on the next one. Please like, please subscribe to the channel, it really helps. And uh, leave a comment, tell me what I've done wrong and how I can find a torque wrench that will do something as little as five Newton meters. See you next time, bye bye.